Toshiba is a pretty well-known company around the world. In fact, if you're in the UK and of a certain age, the phrase Hello Tosh got a Toshiba probably entered your head when I said the name. But today, we're going to look at one of their early attempts to enter the computer market. And here we are. <laughs> this is the Toshiba PA7007, otherwise known as the Pasopia 7 not to be confused with the Pasopia IQ, an MSX computer that people in the UK would probably know more as the HX10, uh, which was uh, probably a lot of people in the UK, if they had an MSX, it was probably their first one. Um, interestingly, <laughs> the 7 here isn't MSX compatible, although it's pretty close, um, which we'll get to in a moment. It was also released in 1983, as was the MSX compatible IQ, uh, which is an interesting strategy, but I, I guess you could kind of work it out. Um, nobody really knew that MSX was going to work or if it was going to even come together, so I, I guess Toshiba were just hedging their bets. Um, when you look at the two machines, it, it's not hard to realize the decision to embrace the MSX standard came whilst the 7 was being designed. Um, they're pretty similar in many ways, and I'm guessing the decision to release it was because this was a follow-up to the original Passopia, um, but while the original was released outside of Japan, uh, getting, well, it got a limited world release. Uh, the 7 didn't. Well, not quite. We can explain that as well a bit later. <laughs> um, anyway, on to the more important matter of the specs. It's an AE based, uh, as all the best computers are, of course. Uh, has 64K of memory and 48K of video memory. Fairly hefty for its time. It also has two SN76489 sound chips, uh, so you can start to see why this thing has the moniker of uh, sound and graphics, which I'll explain in a second again. So many later on things. <laughs> uh, in terms of the graphics, there are eight base colors, but uh, an interesting hardware differing system stretches out to 27 colors. Uh, in text mode, it can display text in eight colors and graphics in four colors at a resolution of 320 by 200. In its fine graphics mode, it can display both kanji text and graphics in eight colors at a resolution of 640 by 200. Uh, it's also got a uh, limited hardware tiling mode, which allows overlapping two colors, giving theoretical 27 colors on screen at once. As far as the sound goes, uh, each of those chips offers three square wave channels and one noise channel, giving a total of six square, square, wave, square wave channels and two noise channels. Um, the operating system is called T-Basic 7, uh, which is Microsoft Basic at the core. Uh, CPM is also available, uh, which goes with an optional hard drive module that you could get. Uh, in terms of the MSX-ness of it all, <laughs> obviously it's an 80 based Microsoft Basic, uh, and it supports cartridges. Run deep here, I'll show you in a second. Uh, really, the sound and the graphics are the outliers. Uh, and ten, you could argue the Passopia is slightly better, in fact, in, the, in terms of those. Uh, right, as far as availability of the 7, as we said before, it, it, true, it was only really released in Japan, but some were donated outside as part of an educational agreement, uh, most notably Poland. Uh, right, well, I guess let's take a little look here. <laughs> what you can see here, this one is obviously very yellowed. <laughs> this would be a much whiter colour. It's uh, got a fairly nice keyboard, pretty uh, good travel and stuff. Uh, lots of dog hair as well. I've got a Labrador, everything has dog hair. Uh, some obviously just normal white buttons and we've got these beige ones plus a couple of coloured buttons. So the graph one for graphics and then a stop button here, which is technically the brake button, as we'd be calling other machines. Uh, a nice solid power rocker switch with a uh, LED power led up here. I do like a nice big power switch, don't you? Um, over here, next to this grill, is the cartridge section, which we have to uh, try without breaking. There we go, it slides back slightly. And this is the sound and graphics moniker that I was talking about there. And inside here is where we would plug extras in. There's a couple of different slots there. Oh, dropped. Slide that back on. Going to the back, we've got a couple of uh, adjusters here, which I need for the picture. This is uh, audio out, which I sent out uh, sound out, which I use with the VGA output. This is the cassette port. This is the 
uh, well, monitor port, which um, I've made an adapter to put it through VGA, which then goes through a, a GBS control thing, which <laughs> sort that out. Uh, this is a reset. Uh, yeah, this is basically like a black and white composite output. This is, I don't know exactly what this does. It, it, it says liquid crystal, so some kind of external display thing, maybe another color port, I don't know. Uh, here's a printer port and this is an expansion bus and yeah, the, the hard wired in cable, power cable. Um, other than that, that's it pretty much for this machine. Yeah, so there's not much more to see on it. Um, it's quite a striking machine in this way, uh, even yellowed like this. I mean, pure white, it must look really nice. Um, maybe I will try to, I don't often, bother retro buying my machines to be honest um i don't mind what they look like but maybe i will try with this one give it a bit of a brightening see what happens because it must look really striking in white i'd say i do like i've got a thing about machines with chins like this uh, display but yeah with a chin like i don't know i don't know what it is i really do like them anyway what we should do is try to load stuff from tape now uh the way we're going to do that is oh one of the other reasons uh, yeah <laughs> one of the other things that it shares with the MSX which is not unusual to be fair with Japanese machines is the cassette lead from MSX works in this which is really handy because I have one um, we will use my laptop and uh, Audacity to load up some games and we'll give them a try now we may not have to record the screen again because this is VGA and my uh, my thing that I use to record game footage doesn't like recording from VGA inputs. So um, we may have to record the screen again like we did with the PCA E8 one, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, back in a bit. Right, here we are. And as you can see, this is T-Basic uh, with a nice Microsoft <laughs> logo up there as well. Uh, so yeah, we will be loading stuff using my MacBook. The lighting is a bit, yeah, it's not great, mainly because uh, I kind of that was going to blow. Yeah, yeah, anyway, you know. Anyway, the lines are the great. You see the machine, it's not a problem. Uh, so I guess, first of all, before we load anything up, let's do the usual, which is typing in. There we go. <laughs> Hello world. Um, so I think first of all, we're gonna load up this game, which you might be able to see on Audacity there, is called Block Kazushi, which I think is basically breakout. So the way we load games up is we do C load on its own, which I'm sure if you've used any Microsoft Basic machine, you'll know. And then we'll just hit play on Audacity. And we should see in a few seconds, it should pop up. There we go, found block. So now we just wait. <laughs> this is quite a short game. Um, comparatively, some of the others are longer. I guess we, this isn't gonna take too long. This is gonna take maybe a minute. So we can kind of watch this one. Others we will skip because <laughs> they will take substantially longer. Uh, and I guess if you're like me, you don't have the patience for this stuff anymore. So we're coming to the end. It will probably finish before it gets to the end because I think there's just there's a bit of trail out as well. And I'm assuming this will be a basic program, so it will. Um... Oh, there we go. Might have heard a click there. That will be the relay inside because it's expecting to drive a cassette player. So if we do a list. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that. <laughs> a nice little graphical uh, display at the top. Okay, this might take a little while to do. Oh, no, there we are. 630 lines. So if we run this now. Oh, yeah, and indeed it is breakout. Uh, where are the keys are? Oh, arrows. There we go. There we are. There are arrows on the keyboard. <laughs> We've got a little bit of sound, which hopefully you can hear. <laughs> I 
I mean, it's a functional breakout game. Ooh, oh, the keys aren't great. <laughs> there we go. All right, we don't want to we play breakout for the whole thing. So let's stop that. There we go, we can stop it. So now let's find another game. And what should we do? Let's do a nice big one. Oh, here we go. Passopia 7 programs system tape. I'm guessing this will be multiple loads, so we'll have to stop it in between because obviously we can't control this. Open that up with Audacity. Oh, blimey. Yeah, okay. You can see where it, it breaks in places. So let's do clone again. Actually, let's do new first. Oh, that will. Yeah. <laughs> let's try that again. There we go. Uh, just to clear the memory. And if we do clone again, we should be able to play this and this time be ready to pause. I'm going to say that we're not getting any, uh, it's not finding anything. I wonder if there's actually, oh, there's not always tape software, of course, on these tapes. It might literally be speech. I think we'd hear that. But that does not feel like that's trying to load anything. No, okay. I don't think that's loading anything. So let's stop that and we will. No, we don't make any change to that. We will load. There you go then, Pro Racer. Why not? Okay, that's loaded up. So we won't list this one because I suspect it's quite long. Let's just try running it. Right. <laughs> uh, well, I've got no idea what any of that says. But I guess four and six are left and right. And spacebar. Okay. Now, is it just not working or is it taking a long time to process? <laughs> Didn't notice that. Okay. Okay. I guess that crashed, right? Let's try. I've got a keyboard in my in my sight, line of sight over here, so I can't see. <laughs> All right, so let's just do a different key other than space. Oh no, that immediately crashed out. Okay, so that game is plain not working then. What a shame. <laughs> so humorously, <laughs> it stopped loading from tape. I don't know why. Uh, the MacBook is definitely playing the audio, uh, but it's just not. I'm not accepting. I've had turned it off and clean contacts and what have you, so who knows? It's just suddenly stopped working. <laughs> anyway, I think you got the point. <laughs> so I was going to say that if you were going to get one of these, really one thing you have to worry about is there are uh, reefers inside, so they will almost certainly pop when you turn this on for the first time, so you have to replace those. Uh, but I guess the other thing then is that sometimes the tape loading just stops working for some reason. I'll have to open it up and work out what that is, but that won't be in this video. Um, yeah. <laughs> Other than that, it's a lovely machine. I will say it's um, an interesting bit of history, uh, a cul-de-sac in Toshiba's computering world. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the video, please hit like. If you really like the video, please hit subscribe. Um, don't forget to share and everything as well. That really helps us out. If you want to help us out on more financial level you can join our patreon or you can join the membership on youtube um or in fact you'll see that there's uh, some merchandise around somewhere on the screen uh you can buy that which will also give us a little bit of money as well anyway see you next time the present is horrible the future looks bleak remember our childhood to get us through the